<laughs> called their song What's a Frequency, Kenneth. And they mentioned that briefly in that Dan Rather documentary. But REM fans are probably a little moist in the shorts because these guys played for the first time in about 17 years. REM uh, broke up some time ago. And Bill Berry, their, their drummer, I thought was great, but he had a brain tumor in the mid-90s. So he split from that band like 25 years ago. But the other three remaining guys went on for a little bit longer, and then they just all hated each other's guts. One of my favorite albums of all time, by the way, I'm a big Warren Zevon fan, and he did a one-off record called Hindu Love Gods, and it was probably 89 or 90, and it was just him with R.E.M. It was him and the guys that weren't Michael Stipe were his backing band, and it's just a, it's covers, but it's like a great, fun album. Anyway, they got inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and so they played at that for the first time in a long, long time. And so that's leading speculation that maybe these guys will bury the hatchets i mean you know they're old guys now and um i think everybody's mellowed a little bit you know i couldn't get into rem but just because michael stipe it was just so so something michael stipe was just way too uh self-conscious for me or something i i, I couldn't vibe with it they were definitely good at what they did it just wasn't for I had me. a lot of songs that i liked yeah a lot of songs but um if you're an old school REM fan, you know, they did this whole big thing on CBS this morning this past uh, weekend where they were talking about getting inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. And um, they were like, yeah, we, we, it was, we said it would take a comet uh, to hit the earth for us to play again, but um, maybe we'll do it again. Who knows? They got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, back in 07, uh, but they are now in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. So who knows? Maybe they'll do something. And all of you REM fans will be very, very excited. Uh, But they said um, until then, um, they're not saying anything about it. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio, tell me where you do that. Check in with me if you're from out of state, because I'd like to know. Scott listens in York, Maine. Sarah is in Norwalk, Connecticut. April is in Moore Park, California. Uh, Isaiah is in Jacksonville, Florida, and Aaron is a new listener in Nashville. You leave messages there, too. Catching up on the last few weeks on the podcast, and an interesting thing I've noticed, I think, I have no numbers to support this, but I think that in an effort to not talk about your birthday, you're talking about it more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Chew on that. By the way, Chew I'm not ta- I'm not talking about it at all. Everybody else is talking about it because they're trying to get me to tell them when it is. I, you'll notice I'm not talking about it. Bill said, "Oh, if you if if you slip, everybody gets a thousand dollars." No, you said that. No, you suggested, no, that and was I said you, you said oh. it, and I said, "Fine, I'm not okay. going to slip up." All right, all right. And so since then, obviously, everybody else Wants talks about. Yeah, I don't care. I don't even remember when it is. Interesting. So, um, do. I will chew on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you do because you got a gift the other day. <laughs> yes, uh, our buddy Mark uh, sent me a very nice package. I don't, I don't know that I have any um, a direct uh, contact to him on social media, but he, he's uh, hits us up quite frequently, and he and his wife sent me a nice package, and it was uh, very, very thoughtful. Alex Jones should have to go work for a homeless shelter for the rest of his life. Somebody said, "Don't do that to the homeless." Right. Exactly. They gotta listen to that crazy. Just give him a bowl of chili, and he'll forget <laughs> forget <laughs> about the whole thing. Yeah, I, I, you know he's gonna be reduced to screaming on street corners, which is where he should have been the whole time. Nobody of that ilk should have ever gotten farther than st- screaming on street corners, which is what people like that used to have to do, and people would rightly walk right by them. Not stand there and go, that guy's got a real point. I should buy something from you him. You know what? Mm-hmm. Hey, do you sell fish oil supplements that will make me smart like you? But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll always have those bangers. You know, in the last few years, and it was immediately after that Sandy Hook verdict, where this guy was trying to make money any way he could, and he released that covers album. We played a handful of those, didn't we? Those Alex Jones cover songs? They weren't bad. Yeah. They were okay, but they didn't sell. I think he figured, oh, these rubes in my audience, they will buy whatever I tell them to buy. That's how he made the bulk of his money was selling supplements and G-Force X Factor or whatever the hell he called them. But the album just laid there. It flopped hard. 
because I don't think people could get their heads around it. Oh, baby, baby. Oops, I did it again. I play that with your heart. <laughs> you might be right. I've been around the world, and I found out that suddenly stupid like people are breeding. Those cretins are cloning and feeding. Like, I, I can't even tell what the songs are because he's he's so gravelly. Well, he, he's, he's so gravelly and also, like, it, I mean, these sound like things that he would say, mm-hmm. but it just doesn't, it, I don't know. It's not hitting for me. Uh. It's a great song. Not a great version. You don't well, like this song, Mary? Do your life. I don't know this. It's fine. There's no, no I don't like turning it. back. Especially not this version. Even while we <laughs> You're such a hater, Mary. Good. I know. Such a hater. It's my job. Yeah. It's your job. Yes, it's my job to be a hater. So anyway, uh, thank you, uh, sir, for the message. Uh, I am not the one uh, talking about my birthday. You know, who Who else doesn't want to talk about their birthday? Who? Donald Trump. Ever heard of this guy? No. He is 78 years old today, and he does not want people focusing on that because he doesn't want people to go, oh, you and the other guy are both really, really old. Way too old. Yeah. I mean, it's a big deal if you're a child and you go, that person's only three years older than me, but when you're 78 and the other guy's 81, no one cares. You're both old. And so you understand why he doesn't want people focusing on his birthday. He wants people focusing on what a terrible city Milwaukee is. That's what... Uh, <laughs> ah. More important things. <laughs> More important things. Boy, they wasted no time in putting billboards. I heard from one of our uh, Milwaukee bureau chiefs that they wasted no time in putting billboards up all around Milwaukee with Trump's quote on it because they're having the Republican National Convention there, week of July 15th. And he's like, Milwaukee's horrible. So there's these billboards with like his his quote or tweet or whatever up on the billboard. And uh, they wasted no time doing that. We used to go to Milwaukee a lot. You know, my brother, middle brother, is a lifelong Brewers fan because he really, you know, Milwaukee's just 90 minutes up the lake. And um, we went to Milwaukee a lot. We go to Brewers games every so often, and, and my brother really took to it. Milwaukee, to me, in 2024, is um, very similar to me like a city like Cleveland, where back in the day, you could rightfully make fun of it up, down, and sideways. You know, growing up, I mean, we, you know, Milwaukee, you just, because a lot of it was really, really gross. But they really had a come up. And so when you go to Milwaukee now, and you could like, oh, yeah, there's stuff going on. You can have a really, really good time in Milwaukee. I've never been there. You've never played Milwaukee? No. Really? Really. Wow. I know. You would think. Well, like I said, it's an hour and a half north of Chicago. Just book a Bounce gig there. there. Yeah. I worked there a long time ago, but they, they went through, like, comedy dry spells for a long, lot. Like, there'd be a club, and then it closed, and there'd be a new club, and it would just... But now I think they finally have... They have Laughing some, Tap up there, don't they? Is laughing that still open? Tap, yeah. I don't know if that... I don't know if that's still open, but they have an improv there, or a funny bone probably now, because they changed all the names. Hmm. Well, the Milwaukee mayor fired back, guy with a fantastic name. The mayor of Milwaukee's name is Cavalier Johnson. Hell yeah. And uh, he's like, I, it's weird that a guy would make fun of a city where they're, <laughs> where they're having the convention for him in a couple of weeks. Well, Donald Trump wants to talk about things that he thinks are horrible. Uh, all of us live through his presidency, so right back at you, buddy. Uh, I'd say that- By the way, this dude, he has been studying Obama tapes from back in the day. He's really got that Obama cadence. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of us live through his presidency, so right back at you, buddy. Uh, I'd say that. Um, look, I find it kind of perplexing. I find it kind of strange he does kind that of uh, yeah. he would insult the largest city in Wisconsin because he's running for president. He obviously wants to win Wisconsin, you know, win the election. Um, and so to insult the state that's hosting your convention, I think, is kind of bizarre. Cavalier Johnson. What a great name. Hey, Jeff. Hey, what's going on, Alan? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm just calling because I need to know what the big deal is about your birthday. I don't know. I don't know exactly when it is. Because um, a few years back, you guys were making up a heist, uh, Bill was. And I called in because I was a cab driver. I was going to be the driver for this heist thing. I don't remember what it was for, but I remember your exact birthday and the year you were born. 
Bill, do you remember a heist we were trying to put together? Heist I mean, it plan? sounds it sounds, sounds vaguely right. familiar. Maybe but, off the air I'll remember it, but not on the air. That'd be evidence. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing that we can talk about over the public airways, of course. No, the because whole, the right. whole thing was that, if, you know, he mentions his birthday. Because some a listener said that he mentions he talks about his birthday all the time. And he's like, "No, I don't." No, yeah. And we're like, "Yeah, you do." Yeah. He well, he do. did because it's August 6, nineteen seventy. Nailed it. Nailed it. And it was <laughs> about that height. <laughs> Good for you, boy. He got right on it. <laughs> he even added yeah. a year to me. You son of a bitch. Well, correct him then. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, Mary, trying to get. Nope, mm. not gonna happen. Nope. See, there nope. you go. You try and try and try again. All right, thank you, Jeff. Happy birthday. Thanks for nothing. It's Happy not my birthday. birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. A heist. Well, uh, the reason we can't talk about it on the air is because you don't know if it ever happened or not. Huh. How do you like them apples? Interesting. Got some sperm news here. From- sperm news. I feel like we're all in agreement when you see a story about a woman who didn't know she was pregnant. And you can't figure out how that happens because babies aren't coming out the size of jelly beans. And so when woman goes and says, oh, I I thought I had to go to the bathroom and it was a baby. Now, this kind of situation, this is the woman who had uh, gave birth to a kid in the Taco Bell bathroom. Uh, that's a natural. Hut. That's a. I'm at the Taco Bell. Yeah. I'm at the combination hospital and Taco Bell. <laughs> that's a natural reaction. If you don't know you're pregnant, you think, well, I just ate Taco Bell. Now I go right. to the gutter, mm-hmm. go to the bathroom. So that's a situation where it's not that crazy. But I don't understand the women who don't know they're pregnant. I don't get it. Well, maybe can maybe have... you gals can explain it to me. People can have like really. Um irregular periods so if they like not necessarily the biggest sign obviously is skipping a month right but if you have never had regular periods then skipping a month would be normal so you wouldn't even think anything of it but you're gonna get bigger uh, maybe they're already big yeah a lot I mean, of these people are already this, big. this lady was not big I, again that's i guess that's a good point if you're someone who's 400 pounds you don't know what the hell's going that on was like anywhere the whole in your show body. where it was i didn't know i was pregnant it's just big fat ladies they're like oh, i don't know that's not this lady yeah. this is like a regular size lady a virginia mom who gave birth at a taco bell briani jackson she said she's a regular she's an in-home care nurse and so a lot of times she's a nurse <laughs> Who didn't know she was pregnant? And th- and listen, with due respect to nurses, it's it's thankless work. It's very hard. But I gotta tell you, over the past maybe five ten years, I don't know if the standards have changed. I don't know what you have to do other than g- do you just have to go to nursing school? I don't know. I, don't I know have known I have known some people who've done a pivot in their life, and they say I'm just going to become a nurse. I would not want these people touching me at all. A couple people come to mind, female acquaintances of mine. I would never let them come near me. I'm like, you're a nurse now? I I mean, is that all you have to do is go to nursing school? Anyway, this woman's a nurse. Are there different, like, levels of nurse? Well, there are, but, I mean, you know, you've got whatever level you study, you've got medical training. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there are tears of that. But anyway, this woman is a nurse who didn't know she was pregnant. And her she's an in-home care nurse. And her patient <laughs> asked if she would go get her something to eat, and she wanted Taco Bell. And so she said, sure. So she wasn't even getting it for her. Right after she placed the order, she started getting stomach cramps. And so she went to the restroom and then came back out and Immediately had to go back. She just kept having this terrible, terrible pain. And she's like, I just couldn't stand up. I don't feel good. And then I looked down, and I realized I was bleeding. And then I panicked and called my... Well, I'll let her explain a little bit. I'm running past the Panera Bread, and then I I hear her just let out this gut-wrenching scream. I'm still panicking. I'm like, babe, say something. And then she's like, oh, my God. 
I just had a baby. And I was like, okay, no, there's no way. I picked her up, I wrapped her in my shirt. Um, she hadn't let out a cry or anything yet. Boy, a girl, I was like, it's a girl. Hang up and call 911. And next thing I know, I was here in a dial tone. <laughs> I just, I don't know what, how it happens. This is not a big, big woman. Jamars and Briani Jackson are the parents. And she went in and the kid came out. Right into the turlet. <laughs> Mommy, how was I born? Will you tell me the story of my birth? It's a... Uh... You were born in a Taco Bell toilet, my love. That's why we named you special number four. <laughs> what was uh, <laughs> Uncle Baby Billy? Where his was he born? No, his wife, the, the redhead. Oh, she Tiffany? Was, yeah, she was born in a toilet. Was she? <laughs> yeah, she's got a whole story about how she was a toilet baby. <laughs> Yeah. Well, listen, everybody, the, I guess the important part is everybody's fine. Um, I guess it would get, it would immediately give me pause to see a woman who is a new mom who is also a nurse who did not know she was pregnant. But uh, everybody's I, fine. I, I think that's just someone that's so dedicated to their job that they're not paying attention to themselves. Oh, that's right. what it is. She's thinking of her patients, yeah. not herself. Ah, I see. Well, it also means that... that she didn't have any cramps before this. Listen, every Which can happen. every body is different. Yeah, but uh, it's crazy. It's wild. But imagine that because you didn't even have time to plan for it, right? What sucks is their son was killed in a crash last year. Yeah. So these are people who spent the last twelve months like in mourning. The kid How old was, was the nine months old. Wow, jeez. How she, was he the only one who died? She was driving, and she hit a pickup truck or it hurt, hit her or something. And so in their mind, they're probably like, this is, uh, Mary would call it fate. They got a replacement baby. Yeah, And they didn't, even, they didn't even know it was coming. So uh, the, the cops uh, initially charged her for the crash, um, but uh, it's been a bad, bad year for them because of that. And now they have uh, a Taco Bell toilet baby. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, well, good for them. Everybody, everybody's happy and accounted for. Did uh, they say the name of the baby? Uh, uh, they did, yes. Uh, Bell Grande. <laughs> Bell Grande Jackson. Perfect. Uh, what What is her name? Um, Not Chalupa. <laughs> <laughs> no, Gordian Chalupa. Mm -hmm. um, Ayana. Little Ayana. Ayana, number five. Uh, uh, Chief <laughs> Cheese burrito and uh huh. That little bundle of joy. There you go. I'm gonna break here. I want to send a text three five one nine two allencoxshow dot com if you're inclined to watch live and you can listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. A wise man once said, "Everything is better on a."